I'm here today with Dave Beck. He is a VR or virtual reality training leader, speaker, managing partner at Foundry 45. His company helps corporate brands train their teams and tell their stories through interactive virtual reality experiences. His team specializes in VR training for HTC, is it Vive or Viva? Yep. Vive, no, Oculus Rift, Oculus Quest, and Oculus Go. These are all headset platforms, technology platforms that you literally wear. Um, his team works with global brands such as Delta, IBM, Coca-Cola, AT&T, John Deere, Wells Fargo, and U.S. banks. And they also frequently partner with manufacturing companies and, yes, even government entities. Dave, we're new fast friends. I'm a huge geek when it comes to this stuff like that. How's your day going? Hey, Dave. I'm Dave. It's good to meet you. <laughs> it's a meeting of the Daves here. All yeah, day. thanks for having me. Sure. Um, well, first of all, yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Beck. I'm with Foundry 45. Uh, we do virtual reality training for enterprises. Uh, you know, we say we put VR to work for them. And we really focus on hard skills VR training. So I think things that are, you know, kind of procedural, uh, you know, where there's one, our tagline on our website is actually when there's one right way to do things, because that's where we really see people actually get the value out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of like, you know, troubleshooting wiring harnesses on Boeing 747s or, you know, which valve do I turn on a nuclear power plant to get the coolant, you know, things like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, one example, you mentioned uh, Delta. Um, you know, we do a uh, plane inspection walk around for them, which is essentially a, uh, it's a virtual reality uh, experience where they learn how to work underneath the wing of the plane. I mean, when the plane comes into the facility, it, uh, you know, the terminal, they have to get it turned around safely and securely in about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's a dangerous environment. It's hard to train somebody down there. They can't even get badged for a long time to get down there. So yeah, that's actually a great example. Um, okay, so I'm a science fiction fan. I'm a nerd when it comes to stuff like this. I remember VR from days gone by. What's the, what's the current state, or I'll call it the state of the market. What's the state of the market with VR right now that you can share with us? You know, I think the biggest story in VR right now is really all around these new all-in-one headsets. So, yeah, I mean, there's been a uh, there's been years and years and years and years talking about virtual reality, and there were you know some late '90s uh, you know excitement around it, but it really jumped off around 2014, 2015, when uh, some of the new headsets came out, really processing power uh, got to be to the point where it was actually that you could have a mobile device on your mm -hmm. face. Um, but what happened was the highest end stuff was what we would call PC based or tethered virtual reality. And so essentially what that means is you're wearing a headset and it's tethered to a gaming computer, which is amazing. Um, very high end, very good uh, graphics, you know, great speed. The challenge with that was, uh, you know, that it's kind of expensive. It requires a lot of equipment. There's a bunch of setup. And so what's happened over the last few years and has really exploded recently has been the kind of advent of the all-in-one headset, which essentially means that the processor, the screen, everything is actually all in the headset. So it's just a headset and a couple of controllers and it tracks you from the headset as opposed to things you have to put around the room mm -hmm. and make it a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it really opens up a whole different world of opportunity for being able to get more headsets out there to be able to do it cheaper. Um, it's a little lower fidelity than the what you would see in, in one of the uh, PC-based tethered ones. Mm -hmm. But for most people who haven't actually, uh, you know, that aren't necessarily full VR aficionados, they wouldn't notice any difference. And mm -hmm. for the types of work we do, again, which is typically hard skills kind of VR training, mechanical, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing, inspection, um, you know, it's a great way to actually get somebody on the job training without having to be on the job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Um, how has... How is this past year, um, the multiple crises, I call it the year of flux, you know, whether it's COVID, whether it's work from home, whether it's economic challenges, 
people, job switching, whatever. How has all of that impacted the, the direction of virtual reality or the pursuit of virtual, virtual reality right now, or even vice versa? I mean, what are your quick thoughts on that? Well, you know, uh, I, we've been fairly lucky as a business because, uh, I mean, before getting in specifically into the VR piece of it, just because we work with software, um, we were comfortable actually working remotely. Uh, one of our development managers actually said he thought his team was more uh, productive the first week we were in shelter in place than they were the last week <laughs> we were in the office. Uh, that's uh, as an aside. But uh, but what we've seen with virtual reality is it actually kind of uh, maps in with what I was saying a second ago about all-in-ones. Um, it's easier to ship those around, to set those up, to just take them out of the box and put them on and use them. Mm -hmm. So in a you know kind of post-COVID world, that's been a big thing. Mm -hmm. Another piece though, that's been really interesting is that hygiene, which was never a part of the conversation at all, is now one of the very first things that comes up. And you know, if you told me a year ago that uh, I'd be telling people to wash their hands uh, <laughs> a lot uh, as part of my job. Exactly. Uh, I would have told you you're crazy, but, exactly. it, but it's true and it's super important. Exactly. And that has been, you know, that's not a bad conversation to be having anyway, because frankly, if people are sharing devices, they should be doing that yeah. anyway. And exactly. now it's just that a lot more uh, front and center. Sure. And just to wrap up here, Dave, um, the question I ask everybody who comes on is nice enough to sit with me and talk here. What lessons have we learned um, during this this past moment, this past year, this past lifetime? Uh, I'll call it almost. What lessons have we learned that we must not forget? You know, from a management perspective, it's been a very interesting year. Um, you know, being able to connect with people through the screen like we are talking right now is very different from sitting down one on one or being able to just, you know, say, hey, let's go grab coffee or let's grab lunch and, and just chat. So we have to be a lot more mindful about making sure that, you know, on the one hand, you want to make sure that you're staying connected. On the other hand, people are so tired of being on, you know, Zoom and Teams all day that mm -hmm. you have to kind of balance that. Yeah. But maybe the main thing that we're doing now that we weren't before is actually talking about people's mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't a part of our our discussion with uh, our teams, mm -hmm. really, because I don't, it either was taboo or it just wasn't something that you would think to talk to somebody at work about. But what we found is that that's a really important conversation to to keep everybody, you know, just to make sure that people are on the right in the right space. I mean, right. it, it's interesting. Sometimes the people that you think would be doing better are actually not. I mean, yeah. if you have four people, you know, a couple parents and two kids or something crammed in a small house and they're all having to work together and go to school together, mm -hmm. that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. But also for the for the younger person who just moved to the city and is in their first apartment mm -hmm. by themselves right. and didn't get a social uh, infrastructure, sure. you know, in the city, they're very yeah. isolated. Flying alone. Uh, and even if they like to, you know, a lot of the people we work with tend to like to, uh, you know, go into headsets and, mm -hmm. and do their thing. <laughs> even with that, you're yeah. still missing out on that kind yeah. of, you know, connection interaction. So yeah, exactly. That, that's hey, been the it, biggest thing for us, probably. If anybody watching this wants to learn more about Foundry 45, where should they go? Well, please uh, check us out online, foundry45.com. There's all sorts of videos and case studies and, mm -hmm. and fun stuff on there. Um, please feel free to uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Dave Beck, Foundry45. You should be able to find me. I'm always happy to connect there and uh, you know, continue the conversation. Excellent. Dave, I really appreciate the time. And we have to have that virtual cup of coffee and talk more about yes. this stuff. Yes. Have a good one. Thanks, Dave.